Hey YouTube, what is up? Welcome back to my channel, Uncultured Pearls. This is where I talk about knitting, crochet, diamond painting, any crafts that make me happy. I will talk about it here and I'm very pleased that you're joining me today. Uh, my name is Lucy. Today is Monday, October 9th. I believe, yes, which is Indigenous Peoples Day, meaning I am off work and get to film a podcast. So hooray. It's starting to get a little crisp out outside these days. Um, still generally warm here in Virginia, but you know, first thing in the morning, you're getting that little taste of fall and I love that. It's definitely putting me in the mood to knit so all is well hope all is well with you too but we do have a lot to talk about today today's topic is going to be the stephen west mcal which if you are joining the mcal you know there has been a lot of drama which is unfortunate on many levels but I think at this point things are back on track things are looking up and uh, I will get into all of it but let's start at the beginning with my yarn choices so I have not filmed anything about the MCAL yet uh, I know my last podcast I mentioned that I hadn't bought the yarn yet but now that has happened, so I will show it to you. Um, if you saw the thumbnail, then it's been spoiled. You know what my colors are. Um, but here they are again. I feel like I've seen a lot of people doing these types of warm colors, and I think it's because autumn is happening and people were just feeling inspired by the fall leaves and i feel like it'll be a very wearable shawl to use these kind of like earthy warm tones so that's what i went for and the yarn that i bought is manos del uruguay and it is their fino base here's one of the tags manos del uruguay fino and this yarn is 70% merino wool and 30% silk. Now, guys, I spent a truly ridiculous amount of money on this yarn. And you know, usually here at Uncultured Pearls, we're on a budget. We don't splurge that much. We like a good, reasonable budget type of yarn. Um, so I've ordered from like Pearl Soho a lot before um, or I, I will buy like a fancy single skein if I'm going to make a pair of socks. Um, I will get like a hand dyed skein that costs more but it's you know just that one skein that you need. For whatever reason for this project I just wanted to go all out. So I said to myself I'm going to go to my local yarn shop. I'm gonna look around, whatever yarn makes me truly happy. I don't really care how much it costs. I'm gonna get it because I love the Stephen West MCAL so much. I just didn't wanna be held back by anything. So that's what I did. I went to Center of the Yarniverse, which is a local yarn store in Ashland, Virginia. And uh, one of the brands that they carry is Mono Still Uruguay. And these colors with the silk just spoke to me. I wanted them. Um, it is a fingering weight. It's a slightly finer fingering weight than Steven really calls for in the pattern because I think he recommends you have about 380 yards for 100 grams. And this, I think, is 490 yards for 100 grams. 
So this is finer, but that's just gonna result in me having extra yarn, which, you know, foreshadowing, it's a good thing if you have some extra yarn in this year's MCAL. Um, yeah, but uh, each skein of these cost $40. So I bought four of them, you do the math there, and this is quite an expensive shawl. But I decided, you know, it's gonna be a handmade thing, it's gonna be special and unique, and I want to love what it's made out of so that I will wear it. And then it can be like a talking piece. If people ask, you know, oh, that's a beautiful shawl. Where'd you get it? Then I talk about how I made it. And I wanted to be proud of it. So I really wanted to love the yarn that I got. So I'll tell you what the colors are. This kind of slightly creamy off-white is called Ivory Letter Opener. And that is going to be my color A. Then we have filigree, which is this delightful yellow gold. And then we have tea biscuit, which has like some really nice variations in it. Like it's not completely one color. There's like warmer parts and more brown parts in it. And then the last one is Garnet Brooch, which is, you know, this delightful rusty red. Love that. So I'm really happy with the colors. I'm really happy with the feel of these, but I will say these were absolute hell to wind. And it's probably the silk content. I have never actually worked with a yarn that has silk in it before. But as I was winding these, first of all, I don't own a Swift. Um, I just, I hadn't really felt like I needed one because I just kind of draped the yarn over two chairs that are set back to back and that has been working okay, but after trying to wind these, I think I'm going to buy a Swift because it was awful. Um, I tried to take a picture. I don't know if you can even really see in the picture, um, so I might not even insert that into the video, but basically it was like the strands in the hank were kind of matted together, like they had almost started to felt together. And so I couldn't just pull a strand off of the, you know, big loop once I untwisted the hank. It wouldn't just easily flow off of that. It's like I had to kind of peel apart the various strands and then like very gently peel out the one strand as it was going along. And it took just forever. It probably took like 45 minutes to wind each one of these, I would say. And luckily I started early enough that I did manage to have it winded by Thursday when the pattern came out, but I was regretting everything. I was a little pissed off because to, spe to spend $40 on a skein of yarn and then have it be really challenging to wind i felt like if i'm gonna spend that much it should be like really amazing in all ways and it wasn't so um anyway though i don't hold grudges <laughs> so i was feeling a little down about it very briefly and then now that it is skeined and i'm knitting with it it is very lovely. The My work is turning out very nicely, so I'm back on board with it. I don't regret spending the money. Everything is fine, but for a minute there, it was rough. So um, let us turn
turn to me actually casting on. So I will show you my very first cast on that I started for the Stephen West MCAL Geo Gradient. Um, I did not do a gauge swatch. I ended up not having time since it took me so long to wind everything. I just decided to cast on. And so I cast on with the recommended needle for the pattern that Steven provides, which I think is a US 4, I'm pretty sure. So here was my cast on for that, this little skinny guy. And I mean, look, the yarn is lovely. But I was not really happy with the fabric that this was giving me. Um, it's very loose. Like, if you can see, it's very stretchy. Um, it, it has a lot of drape, but kind of too much drape, in my opinion. And so I was a little bit unhappy with this. It was also challenging to do. like. If you can see the edge of this was really loose and I just felt like it was gonna slip off my needles all the time. I used the uh, stainless steel Chiaogu ones with the red cord that a lot of people use. They're very slippery needles and with that needle size it was it was just feeling like the needles were too big. So then I went online and I looked up what the recommended needle is for this Mono Still Uruguay yarn that I'm using. It recommended a US 2 to 4 was the range. And I already know that I'm a fairly loose knitter. So I was like, that's the ticket let me use a US 2. So I sized down two sizes compared to what Steven recommends and cast on again with a US 2. And when I did that, this was what I came up with. So um, this was the original Clue 1 and I will pivot and talk about everything that's happened there. But uh, this was my product, my, the fabric that I got with a US 2, and I was really happy with that. Like the kind of the edges where you slip one with yarn in front, that's looking a lot tighter than it was in my original. And like this is a very good fabric. It's drapey, but it's still thick and squishy and the, you can see every stitch nicely, and it just felt a lot better to work with. So, um, what, once I cast this on, I was, I liked the look of it. I decided to stick with the US 2, and um, that was Thursday night, I guess. Friday night? I'm losing track of the dates because everything hit the fan. Um, but anyway, as you can see, this was how far I got ultimately with the original Clue 1. I think this all must have been Thursday night that I did all of this. Um, Or maybe, you know, I think I might have continued a little bit on Friday before I understood, like, the extent of what happened. But I'll get into that now. So if you're not aware, which probably if you're watching this video, you are extremely aware of everything that has gone on with this MCAL. But just as a very brief overview... The original design that Stephen West came up with, it was brought to his attention that th that design looked to some people 
too similar to a swastika. And not everyone sees it. Like, I personally don't really see it. Um, but I never actually saw the completed Clue 1 before I knew about the swastika controversy. So I don't know what I would have thought looking at it without knowing what I was looking for. I don't think I would have seen it, to be honest. But once the seed was planted in my head that it looked like that, I can understand why some people think it looks like that. And once that seed is in there, you can't get the seed out. So I like, I believe it's an individual decision. Everyone has got to choose what they're happy with with their shawl. And you know, some people had already finished Clue One by the time this news came out. Some people had like done half of it and then developed plans to modify the color choices so that it no longer looked like that. Um, and now as of me filming this video, Steven has just posted another video. Um, it's the video where he is explaining some more background on the situation and it's, he gets very upset in the video. He's, you know, tearing up and you can tell that this has been a very heavy burden on him the past few days. And I feel very badly for him about that. Like you can tell looking at him and from all of his videos, you know, obviously I don't know him personally. I know we often feel like we're friends with these people that we watch on YouTube, but I've never met Stephen West. I don't know him, but from everything that he's posted, he seems like a truly wonderful person, very open heart, very energetic, and wants to share this joy of knitting with everyone. He seems very inclusive, wants everyone to enjoy the patterns that he has put out and would never want anything that he creates to be remotely connected with hate or exclusion or past trauma or anything like that. And so because I have so much respect for him, I personally decided that I cannot continue with the Clue one, especially since I do have this channel and I plan to show my finished shawl on the channel and I plan to wear it out in real life and like heaven forbid if anyone else were to see it and they saw that symbol in it, even if I don't see it, like I don't want to risk that possibility of making someone uncomfortable or making someone assume things about the way I am because I made this pattern that accidentally resembled something. and. I just decided I'm going with the new clue. I hope any of you out there, if you're doing the MCAL as well, like I know it sucks that we've all cast it on one version and you know, this was like hours of knitting. So I get how people are frustrated and unhappy, but mistakes happen. Like it's, I was telling my mom this, I actually had a very bad day at work on Friday. Um, I made a huge mistake at work and I'm not gonna go into all the details. I'm kind of sick of reliving it in my head. I'm over it. But like these things happen, right? You have the best of intentions, but something that you just didn't predict happens. You screw up and then you have a decision to make. You can either, you know, learn from it, correct as best you can, and then move forward. And then in the future, you're made aware of the possibility of this and you do what you can to not do it again. And that's really all we can do. And so 
it was just kind of funny that that happened in my life and then poor Steven is going through all of this at the same time and so like I really get how he must be feeling and I'm sure he doesn't watch my channel but like I'm sending him all of my love and all of my respect because I think he's handled this as best as he can and I want to support him as best as I can which means I am doing the new clue which I think is beautiful and honestly for me I enjoy knitting it better than the original clue. I think it's more fun, it's more addicting, it's simple, but it's it's complicated enough that you're having fun and it involves purling and I love to purl. I, everyone hates on purling, I don't get it. I think I like purling more than I like knitting to be honest. So I'm glad that this new option involves both. So now I will show my updated clue one. I'm not finished, but I got far enough to show you what it's looking like. So, ta-da, there you go. And so far I've just done the very simple pattern that he put out with no modifications. Um, I might switch up the colors a little bit, but I haven't decided yet. And, oh, I, I didn't make a spoiler. I'm sorry, I should have said, like, I'm about to show it. But I think at this point, with everything that's going on, people know <laughs> what Clue 1 is going to be looking like. So, um, here it is. I The one thing I didn't do a great job at it was the very center where you do the cast on with a crochet hook. Mine was a little bit too loose. So if you can see... Like, there's, these are very loose stitches around the center, but maybe I like that, you know? Maybe it's more of a feature than a sloppiness issue, but I'm gonna leave it. I think it looks fine. And then, yeah, it's just these really simple, gorgeous, radiating stripes that go out from the center. And um, it has worked round, as, well, it's worked in the round, as you can see. So since it is garter stitch in the round, you are purling every other row. And um, as I said, I love that because I like to purl. And he, Steven said something in his video, and I know I can't remember the exact words, but like he said, this new pattern, it's it's coming from his heart and it kind of looks like that, you know, like it's, this is the center, this is his heart and the love is radiating out from his heart. And I feel that, I support that. And I think it's gonna be a very lovely MCAL. And I cannot wait to see what's in clue two and three and four. I am on board. I know in reading some comments on Instagram, etc., like some people are mad. Some people say that they're giving up on the MCAL. They might not do one again in the future and all of that. And that's fine. Like we all do this to have fun. So for those people, if it's not bringing them joy anymore, then that's fine. Don't do it. But for me, I think Steven comes up with great designs and I think mistakes like this happen, like even when you send something to test knitters, like it's hard to, it's hard to see the resemblance. And then even if you do see the resemblance, it's hard to, recognize that it's gonna be a big deal and come forward and tell someone especially a designer like Stephen West that is very well known and well trusted and like if I were a test knitter and I saw something would I 
have the guts to come forward and be like, you know, Steven, this this might gonna look like a swastika. Like, I don't know that I would notice and anticipate that it's gonna be a big deal enough to say something. So I get how it happened. Um, no shade to anyone involved. Because, like, can we all get a grip? It's just knitting. Like, I don't know. Sometimes you have to kind of change your plans and roll with the punches. And that's what we're doing. And the end result is going to be gorgeous. And I think it's very heartening that we live in a world where something as minor as a knitting pattern that kind of resembles a symbol from like 80 years ago that we're able to recognize that and correct and move forward is a good thing so um that's probably all i have to talk about i mean it's the mcal is just a knitting frenzy so that's probably all I'm really going to be doing for the next week. Um, I... Yeah, honestly, I think that's it. Um, so today's Monday, that means I have Tuesday, Wednesday, only two more days before the next clue comes out, uh, which is not ideal. I'm probably not going to finish because um, like I'm supposed to do, this is the color A here again, so I'm supposed to do color B, C, and D, another stripe of each, and then A and B again. So it, you know, will probably come out to here or so. And I'm most likely not gonna be on track, but as Steven says, embrace the pace. There is no requirement to finish this thing in the four weeks and more than likely I will not. Sorry if you hear the wind whipping in my balcony door. Um, it's quite breezy today. But yeah, I, I think last year it took me something like at least seven or eight weeks to finish. I did finish by Thanksgiving, I'm pretty sure, but it's unlikely I will finish within the four weeks and that is totally fine. Also because you start to see other people doing some modifications. Uh, if you're a little bit behind, you can check out some of the modifications that other people are doing and um, kind of adopt some of them or come up with your own. Which, speaking of, I'm thinking about altering the colors, so I might do like another of the A, B, C, and D, and then instead of doing A and B again, I might do like single stripes, or kind of like two rows of each instead of like the four, I don't know. I'm thinking about it, I have some time before I figure that out, but I kind of do like the idea of doing something a little bit different and unique just to put my own spin on it and make my shawl special and unique to me. But then again, if it's hand knit by your own hands and your color choices, even if you follow the pattern exactly, it's still a unique piece of art that you have created. So either way, it's totally fine with me. And I'm just excited to still be on this journey. I, I'm i definitely continuing with the MCAL. I think I'm going to do it in future years. Um, probably every year, but, you know, I. if I were to take a break, it wouldn't be because of this situation. It would just be, you know, to avoid a bit of stress because I think it can be stressful you know it's about your outlook 
if you're really grinding to get every clue done in the week that you have, then knitting starts to feel like work and I really don't like that. So that's why I'm trying to embrace my pace, do what feels right, enjoy the process, and roll with the punches that Steven comes out with because we're all just trying to have fun. And um, I would like to hear from you guys on it if any of you are also knitting the MCAL. Um, and I understand that people are gonna be upset. I, I had my moments of feeling that way too, you know, it's when you get off work and you get home and you feverishly start knitting and then you realize that all that work you've done is not gonna be in the final shawl, it's, it hurts for a second, you know? So let me know how you guys are adapting um, if you're doing any modifications to the, the updated clue, I'd love to hear about them because um, maybe I'd have a chance to alter mine a little bit more if you have any great ideas. Um, or if you've done one of the other modifications to the original clue one and you're sticking with it, um, let me know about that too because I know that's probably one of the most controversial parts of this whole thing is that Steven has now said that he's not going to be promoting any pictures of the original clue, even if the colors are altered so that it is a modification of the original clue, he's still not going to be posting those or like allowing them to be posted on the Ravelry thread and stuff like that. So I get that people are upset by that because if you really change the color orientation, you can't really see the symbol that he's trying to avoid. But at the same time, I understand it because how close are people allowed to get before it starts to look like that symbol again that can be extremely difficult to moderate so if they've got to take a stance that is no posting of the original clue or modifications of the original clue and that's just the way it has to be then that's the way it has to be and if you want to continue with that version of the shawl and just have it at home and wear it in your personal life and not post it online then that is your prerogative that's totally fine you do you but i totally get how um you know his name is associated with this shawl and he doesn't want images that are online to be too close for comfort basically with the symbol. So I'm standing with Steven, I'm pivoting with Steven, I've embraced this new pattern which in a lot of ways is more beautiful in my opinion and I hope we can all join together, move forward, and support him. So um, if you want to continue following my journey, if you will, to create this MCAL, please consider hitting subscribe. That would help me out and it's gonna raise the likelihood that you'll get rec recommended more of my videos in the future. Um, also, leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you guys and what you're working on. If you're doing the MCAL, if you've decided it's too much in general and you never started it this year, let me know that. Or if you started and maybe you're a little disenchanted at this point, let me know that too. We'd love to hear from you. And hopefully I will be able to film an update next week after Clue 2 comes out. I'm excited to see what that clue brings. And yeah, love knitting. Sometimes bad things happen, that's just life. We're gonna move forward and continue to love this craft that brings us all together. So 
that is it for this episode. Thank you for joining me. Hope you all are having a very good, very restful Indigenous Peoples Day. And I will see you hopefully next week, maybe the week after, but I will have an update for you soon. So take care and much love to all of you. Bye.